HISD family and math scholars. My name is Mr. Jones and today I'm going to be sharing a lesson with you on unit rates and converting measurements. The objective for today is that I will learn how to give examples of rates as the comparison by division of two quantities having different attributes. So let's go over vocabulary words that we may use for this lesson. The unit rate. The unit rate describes the amount per one or the rate when the denominator is one. Example, 27 cents per ounce and 40 miles per gallon. Okay guys, today's do now is over unit rates. And I know that we haven't gone over unit rates first, but we are well versed in ratios. So let's give it a try. Just know that we're solving for one. Now, boys and girls, let's go ahead and do a do now, or better yet, take a virtual trip with me as I take my daily bike ride. Come on. Okay guys, so we're gonna just ride through the neighborhood on my bike. Let's see how far we go. All right, guys, we finally made it. Now, let's go calculate. Mr. Jones rides his bike through the neighborhood. He rode for five and six tenths miles in 26 minutes. Calculate his rate of speed. Please be sure to use the rate miles per hour. I'll give you three minutes.
Okay, so let's check our calculations. I first set up my ratio 5 and 6 tenths miles per 26 minutes. And I write that in fraction form. Then I take 26 minutes and divide by 26 to get one minute. So if we weren't cycling for an actual hour, we have to calculate per minute first, and then we can multiply times 60 minutes to get the miles per hour. So we divide 26 minutes divided by 26, and we get one minute. And then we take 5 and 6 tenths miles divided by that same 26 to get 22 hundredths miles. So... I rode 2,200 miles per minute. Now, after that, we set up another proportion, multiplying 60 times one minute. And so we get 60 minutes, which is an hour. And then we take that same 60 and we multiply it times 2,200 miles, giving us a total of 13 and 2 tenths miles per hour. But we'll just round that to 13 miles per hour. Hey guys, now it's time for our first activity. The first scenario, Natalie does 87 sit-ups in three minutes. I make my ratio in a fraction form, which is 87 in the numerator and three in the denominator. And then I'm going to simplify that. But remember, unit rate, we're trying to get per one. So per minute is what we're looking for. If I divide the numerator and the denominator both by three, I get 29 over one. So therefore, she's doing 29 sit-ups per minute. Also, it says that she comes back and she does 26 push-ups in two minutes, right? So it has a better ratio of sit-ups than she has push-ups, it seems like. So I put 26, the same process, I put 26 in the numerator, two in the denominator, and I am trying to figure out how many push-ups can she do per one minute. Again, when I'm solving for unit rate, I'm solving for one unit. So therefore, if I simplify and I divide both the numerator and the denominator by two, it seems as though Natalie does 13 push-ups per minute. So now, once I get the unit rate, it's easier to solve for it. So if I want to see how many push-ups Natalie can do in five minutes, I'm going to ask first, Natalie, how many push-ups can you do in one minute? So if I were ever to ask Natalie, how many sit-ups can you do in five minutes? I would first need to know how many sit-ups can she do in one minute? And so when she calculates that and she tells me, oh, I can do 29 sit-ups in one minute. And then all I have to do is calculate 29 times five. The same thing for the push-up. I do 13 push-ups per minute. It's easier to calculate how many push-ups Natalie can do in five minutes. So again, unit rates are very simple. You only need to know one rule. We're solving for one, one unit. For every mile, per minute, per dollar, per week, per day, per, 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 per. You start hearing that vocabulary, you know you're in unit rate territory. Solve for one. One. Let's go over our first unit rate problem. Okay. So when Michael drives 100 miles on the highway, his car uses four gallons of gas. Determine the number of miles that can be driven using only one gallon of gas. So again, this is a unit rate problem. And for unit rates, we have to solve for one, right? So we are going to solve per one gallon of gas. Hmm. Let's see. It's probably not going to be hard, but let's check it out. So 
before we get started, remember, in our previous lesson, we had to organize the information as we read it in the problem. So if we see 100 miles first, let's go ahead and write 100 miles in the numerator and four gallons of gas in the denominator. All right, so now that we have that ratio set up in a fraction form, we're gonna make a proportion solving for one gallon of gas. All right, so we put the one gallon of gas and we match that with the four gallons of gas. By matching, I mean placing that in the denominator. Since four gallons of gas is in the denominator, we're gonna place the one gallon of gas in the denominator as well, right? On the right side of the equal sign. So now that I have that set up, I'm gonna say, how can I get from a bigger number, meaning four gallons of gas, to a smaller number, meaning one gallon of gas? And it's fairly simple. How do I get from the number four to one? What operations will allow me to get from a bigger number to a smaller number? You guessed it, division. Remember, subtraction, I can also get from a bigger number to a smaller number, but for proportions, we don't use addition and subtraction. And the reason being is because it would throw off our proportion. So what divided by four will give me one? You guessed it, I'm dividing four by itself in order to get one gallon of gas, okay? So let's go ahead and divide that. Four divided by four gives me one. Now, in order for me to have a proportion uh, or an equivalent fraction, I must divide the very same number that I did in the denominator and I use that in the numerator, right? It has to be the same number. You can't divide by four down here and divide by 25 up there. Right. The numbers are not the same. You won't get a proportion. So I divide the denominator by four. I'm going to divide the numerator by four, right? And my numerator in this case will be 100 miles. So I'm going to say 100 divided by four will give me 25. So now I have 25 miles per gallon. And you saw for the unit rate, it was that simple. All right. Another thing I want to mention about this is that you see that I wrote my units down. I just didn't write 100 over 4. I made sure that I wrote 100 miles over 4 gallons. And the reason being is because now I'm able to match my units together from left to right. Yeah. I can't match if I don't have the actual unit, okay? All right, so 25 miles per gallon, you're cooking. Let's move to the next one. A worker at a clothing company uses 200 buttons to make 50 shirts. At this rate, how many buttons would the worker use to make 350 shirts? The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our information from our word problem to build our first ratio. Now, what do we know? It takes 200 buttons to make 50 shirts. I'm gonna put that and organize it in a ratio just as I see it in the problem. So I'm basically gonna put 350 shirts in the denominator because it matches the 50 shirts. So we wanna put shirts equaling shirts, buttons equaling buttons, okay? So now I have these two numbers that were both provided by the problem. I have these two numbers, two denominators in my proportion. So that's a good thing because now all I need to do is multiply or divide in order to get from one side to the other. So in this case, I'm going from a smaller number to a bigger number. Therefore, I'm just going to multiply times seven. I know seven times 50 will give me 350 t-shirts. Okay. And whatever I do for the bottom, I must do for the top. Remember that. 
okay? With proportions, what you do for the top, do for the bottom. What you do for the bottom, you do it for the top. What do I mean by that? You use the same operation and number in order to get from one side to the next. So if I'm multiplying my denominator times seven, I have to multiply my numerator times seven. And 200 times seven will give me a total of 1,400 buttons. Vincent team post their number of wins and number of completed races each week. Using the chart below, write the ratio of number of wins to number of completed races for each driver in the chart. So now I have the instructions. I need to evaluate or analyze the data provided in the chart and provide ratios from the number of wins to the number of completed races. So therefore I have Earnhardt having a ratio of six out of 20 also known as three tenths when you divide the numerator and denominator by two. Johnson has a ratio of one fifth. So that means Johnson wins 20% of his races. Kane has a ratio of two fifths equaling 40%. Mendoza has a ratio of one fourth and Martin also has a ratio of one fourth. When you simplify five out of 20, you get one fourth, which is also 25%. Okay, so the benchmark fraction for Stewart would be three fourths, which is 75%. Is there anything about this data that you find interesting? I know one thing, I see that Mendoza, both Mendoza and Martin both have a 25% winning ratio. Okay, Justin was deciding between some Jujubees and some Sour Chews. If the Jujubees were $3 for 12 ounces and the Sour Chews were $3.50 for 14 ounces, what would be the better buy? I need to know the unit rate for this particular purchase and I can break down how much am I spending per ounce of candy. And in the Jujubee scenario, I'm actually spending 25 cents per ounce of candy. So a quarter per ounce. And for the Sour Chews, I noticed that even though I'm paying $3.50 and I'm receiving 14 ounces, I'm still paying 25 cents per ounce of candy. So therefore, there is no better buy. Both the Sour Chews and the Jujubees are 25 cents per ounce. Now guys, let's transition over to converting, converting measurements. measurements. Anna has a kitten that weighs two pounds. When her kitten is grown, the vet said that it would weigh a total of 17 pounds. How many more ounces will the kitten weigh when it's a grown cat? So there's a couple of ways you could approach this problem, but let's choose the easier way. So we know that Hannah's kitten weighs two pounds and the vet says when it's a grown cat, it's going to weigh a total of 17 pounds. <clears throat> and then it asks how many more ounces will the kitten weigh when it is a grown cat? So the first thing that we can do, since it says how many more, we're gonna subtract the amount of pounds that it is when it's a grown cat minus the amount of pounds while it's currently a kitten, okay? So let's do so. We say 17 minus two will give us 15 pounds. Now we're first going to go to our mathematics chart and see how many ounces are there in one pound. So we go and we scroll until we see the relationship of ounces and pounds and we discover that there are 16 ounces in one pound. 
okay? So we take the 16 ounces, we place that in the numerator, and we take one pound, place that in the denominator. And now we have successfully set up our ratio of ounces to pounds. Across from the equal sign, we're gonna build another ratio. So we're not trying to see how many ounces are in one pound, but yet we're trying to see how many ounces are in 15 pounds. Remember, 15 pounds represents the difference of the 17 pounds she will weigh when she's a grown kitten and the two pounds of what she currently weighs. So we put 15 pounds in the denominator because we're matching the pounds with the pounds. So let me ask you a question. What times one gives you 15? You got it. Didn't even have to think about it. One times 15 gives me 15. All right. So remember what I said. What's good for the bottom is good for the top. So now I'm going to multiply 16 ounces times 15. And now I discovered that there are 240 ounces in 15 pounds. A can contains 24 fluid ounces of fruit juice. How many pints of fruit juice does that can contain? So in this particular problem, I see that I'm comparing the units fluid ounces with pints. I grab my mathematics chart to find the relationship of fluid ounces to pints. As I scroll down on the mathematics chart, I don't see a direct relationship of pints to fluid ounces. What I do see is one cup is eight fluid ounces and one pint equals two cups, okay? So if I need two cups, I know that's eight times two is 16 fluid ounces, which gives me a pint. So I did a little math right there, but don't worry, that was simple. I just doubled the amount of cups. So now we have our ratio. We have 16 fluid ounces over one pint. Now we have to build a proportion, which is draw the equal sign, and then the fraction bar, and then you go back up to the word problem, and you see that the problem is asking for 24 fluid ounces. Remember we said we were gonna take that number that represents fluid ounces, and we were gonna match it with the other fluid ounces, which was 16. Now, so we put the 24 fluid ounces in the numerator, and I also noticed that 16 doesn't go into 24 evenly, so it's going to require a little division. So once I divide 24 by 16, I get 1 and 5 tenths, okay? So I say 16 times 1 and 5 tenths gives me 24 fluid ounces. What's good for the top is good for the bottom. I'm also going to multiply one pint times one and five tenths, giving me a total of one and five tenths pint. So there you have it. 24 fluid ounces equals one and five tenths pint or one and a half pints. A cougar jumped a distance of 13 yards. How many inches did this cougar jump? Okay. So again, I'm gonna allow you to go to the mathematics chart and tell me what two units are we comparing? I'll give you 15 seconds. Aha, you got it. I'm comparing inches and yards. All right, so now I take that information from the mathematics chart to build my first ratio. All right, so I have one yard is equivalent to 36 inches. And I'm gonna put 36 inches in the numerator and one yard in the denominator. I'm gonna build my proportion again. So draw my equal sign, my fraction bar, and now I need to know how many inches did this cougar jump if he jumped 13 yards. So my yards is in the numerator or in the denominator. 
Yep, you got it. It's in the denominator. So now I have 13 yards in the denominator. So 1 times 13 gives me 13. And 36 times 13 gives me 468 inches. That is a strong cooler. The chamois, an animal similar to a goat, lives in mountainous areas of Europe and Asia. It can jump up to six and five tenths high and distances up to 19 and five tenths feet. How many inches is six and five tenths feet? Again, pull out your trusty mathematics chart check the relationship of inches to feet and i see that there are 12 inches in one foot okay 12 inches on top one foot at the bottom is equivalent to six and five tenths feet in the denominator and when i say bottom i mean the denominator okay so i have 12 inches in the numerator one foot in the denominator is equivalent to six and five tenths feet, okay, in the denominator. And so now I'm gonna take one times six and five tenths gives me six and five tenths. And what I do for the bottom? Well, you know, I do the same for the top. Yeah. I multiply 12 times six and five tenths feet. I give you about 15 seconds. And yes, you have it 78 inches. 78 inches is equivalent to six and five tenths feet. All right, guys, here's a couple of tips to remember. For unit rates, be sure to divide and solve for one. Remember, unit rates means for one or per one. Also, be sure to organize your information in your ratio just as you see it in the problem. So whatever comes first, you put it in the numerator. And if it comes second, you put it in the denominator. And last but not least, always build your proportion. Make sure you build your proportion. That's a very important step. Okay, and for converting measurements, be sure to use your mathematics chart to see the relationship of the two units. Example, if you're looking for inches and feet, know that there are 12 inches in one foot and that you will put 12 inches in the numerator and one foot in the denominator. Also, be sure to match your units in your proportion. So, inches go with inches and feet go with feet. They should be directly across from each other. So if you have 12 inches and you're looking for 356 inches, make sure that 356 inches goes in your numerator. And last but not least, solve for the missing unit by multiplying or dividing. And remember, when it comes to proportions, never add or subtract. Hey guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Mr. Jones underscore WMS, and on Instagram, Mr. Jones underscore the great. And feel free to ask any pressing questions that you may have from the lesson. Thank you for tuning in.